Growing in the Fruit of the Spirit. My name is Olushegun Mokolu. The true indicator of a walk with God, of a child of God, is the fruit of the Spirit. The true indicator of a man that is truly called of God into ministry is fruit of the Spirit. You may think that it is the demonstration of power. You may think that it is the acquisition of material things. No, it is the fruit of the Spirit. What did Jesus say when he was talking about false prophet? He said, by their fruit, you shall know them. That means even a genuine prophet, you will know that prophet by their fruit. It is not by how much they have. It is not the claim of miracles and so For the devil himself can reproduce miracles. What the devil can't reproduce is the fruit of the Spirit. He can't reproduce that. And then as a Christian, as a believer in Christ, the ultimate proof of your life that you are a follower of Jesus is the fruit of the Spirit. The only way we are going to know what you are made up of, what is inside of you, is the fruit of the Spirit. You see, if you plant a tree, and that tree is supposed to yield fruit, eventually the tree will grow. But how should we know that this tree is fruitful, or this tree is growing, or this tree is maturing, or what stuff the tree is made up of is when we see the fruit. That's when it can benefit anybody. That's when we can eat from it. So our life is a planting. God has planted his son Jesus Christ into every heart, and he expects us to grow to produce Jesus. In fact, the real, the real measure of maturity is the fruit of the Spirit. It's not a man that says, so oh, he's seeing angels every day. <laughs> it's not a man that says he's hearing God audibly. It's not a man that is into ministry. The real measure of somebody that is mature in Christ is fruit of the Spirit. How do you know when something, when a tree is fully matured? You see, there are trees when you plant them, they are not going to be fruitful for some years. They are growing. They may even become big, but they will not be fruitful. But after a while, they now start producing fruit. What does that indicate to you? That tree is now mature. Before when you didn't see fruit, the tree was growing, but it was not yet mature. So when it became mature fully, it can now begin to produce fruit. And then regularly, it will now be producing fruit effortlessly. So the true sign of a Christian maturity is fruitfulness. It is the fruit of the Spirit. You see, there is the leading of the Spirit. There are gifts of the Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is above them all. If you don't know the fruit of the Spirit, and you are working in the gift of the Spirit, or in the leading of the Spirit, you will end up in error. That's why it is possible for you to prophesy, but you are not loving. People will still see you as a wicked person. People will still see you as an unkind person. You can be in ministry, but yet, people, people do not like your attitude because you are uncaring, you are not kind, you are not humble. So ultimately, the real proof of any life is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. The fact that I'm doing video now, I'm preaching and speaking, does not mean anything really. When you meet me, can you see the fruit of the Holy Spirit in my life? If you don't see it, be sincerely, it doesn't matter what I'm teaching. It doesn't matter how great we speak. It is nothing in the end. The ultimate proof is the fruit of the Spirit. Because you see, calling and gifting varies. It's not something we work for. I have a call in my life. I occupy one of the fivefold ministry. So my gifting in life is going to work in that direction. It's not because I labor for it. It's not because I struggle for it. Many times I want to preach. I don't even open Bible for five minutes to go and preach. I will just be in my bathroom, and then the message will come, the scriptures will come, everything will come, and I could go there and speak for four, five hours. You see, that, that is not me. That is just the gift of the Holy Spirit. When you meet me, how do I talk to you? Am I harsh? Am I rude? Am I arrogant? Do you per perceive me as somebody that is proud, somebody that cannot listen to other people? How does my wife see me? Am I loving? Am I caring? These are the real issue, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. That's why it is the same for every one of us, you see, because ministry is not the same. Some are apostles, some are teachers, some are prophets, but, but the fruit of the Spirit, it comes across all board. It does not matter how much you've been in ministry. It does not matter where you are in Christ. 
It does not matter how long you, you've, you came to know Jesus Christ. It's the same thing for all of us. We are all on equal footing. So let nobody intimidate you. The true measure of our life in Christ is the same for everybody. Every one of us. See, you may not be a preacher. You may not be known. But you can be filled with the fruit of the Spirit. You are a mature Christian in the sight of God. God is proud of you. Now, I may be preaching. I may be going everywhere. I may be popular. But I don't have the fruit of, this, of the Spirit in me. I'm nothing. I'm telling you, when the day of judgment comes, you will be rewarded. I'll be reprimanded. That is the truth. It's equal. It's equal for every one of us. That's the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So we're just going to look at the scripture and see what exactly then is this fruit of the Holy Spirit. How can we grow in the fruit of the Holy Spirit? If this is the crucial matter, because you see, when we say fruit, it means somebody had planted a seed. Fruit is the product of a seed. So that means that God has an expectation over our life. You know, there is works and our works will be rewarded. But fruit is what God is seeking for in our lives. God doesn't eat our works, but he eats our fruit. Hallelujah. You eat fruits. Do you eat, do you eat works? No, you eat fruit. So what God desires is fruit. Jesus said, herein is the Father glorified that you bear more fruit. That is what glorifies God. That is what God is looking for. And this one is equal for everybody. You are not at, a, at an advantage because you are a preacher. You are not an ad, at an advantage because you are a singer, a dramatist, or because you are involved in ministry. No. Once you are in Christ Jesus, we all have equal platform and equal footing to be fruitful. So if somebody is more fruitful than you, it's not because of ministry. It's not because of gift. It's not because that person is highly favored than you. No. We all have equal opportunity, equal chance, equal platform, equal grace, equal seed to be fruitful. You remember the seed of the parable of the sower. He went and he was sowing seed everywhere. And then um, one fell on the wayside, some on the rock or among thorns. But you see, the end product of the one that fell on the good soil is that it produces fruit. But it was the same seed, the same quality. So there is no partiality with God. On this matter, there is no partiality with God. This has nothing to do with giftings and callings. This is what God has called every child of God to do. So look at your life. Examine your life in light of the scripture. Is that the fruit of the Spirit in me? Because when you receive the Holy Spirit, how do you think we will ultimately know? Through the fruit of the Spirit. If the Holy Spirit is in you, He will produce His fruit in you. If you have believed the Holy Spirit for three years, four years, and we cannot see the fruit of the Holy Spirit in you, then, then you need to sit down and check. Did you really receive the Holy Spirit? Are you really sure you are walking in the Word of God? If you have pastored a church, you have, you have pastored a church for five years, even for one year. In Antioch, they pastored a church for one year, and the Bible said they were called Christians. Why? Because they could see the fruit of the Spirit. So if you are a pastor, and you have pastored a church for two years, and you have not produced people with the fruit of the Spirit, you need to ask yourself, what are you doing? Are you really doing ministry? Because the real output, the real measure, also of a ministry, is the fruit of the Spirit. It's not large numbers. It's not large followings. It's the fruit of the Spirit. You may gather, you may gather 170,000 members every Sunday. If we do not see the fruit of the Spirit, you are a failure. You are not doing ministry. You are just wasting your time. Because what should be produced in people, what the Word of God, you see, this is said the Word of God is seed. So if you are preaching, that means that you are sowing seed. And then the kind of seed you are sowing is now not producing fruit of the Spirit. Then something is wrong with you. That means you are not preaching the true and the genuine message of our Lord Jesus Christ. So what then is the fruit of the Spirit? Now, to understand the fruit of the Spirit, we must first understand the works of the flesh. So when you look at the book of Galatians, where we have the fruit of the Spirit, he started first by discussing the works of the flesh. So let's look at that. So in Galatians chapter 5, verse 19, it says, now, the works of the flesh. You see, so look at why I is describing flesh. Works. Works of the flesh are manifest. Which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lafishiousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, 
envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in the time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And it means the list is endless. If you are involved in any of this, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, but you see, the plan of God is not just to deliver you from the works of the flesh. The plan of God is to fill you with the fruit of the Spirit. You see, when a plate is dirty, you wash that plate so that you can eat with that plate. Imagine that you just wash a plate and you keep it. Of what use is it? There are many homes. They have, they have plates they just keep in store. They are useless plates. Because when you are not eating with a plate, what, of what use is that plate? You can't use it to do decoration in the house. So if God is saying these works of the flesh cannot be in you, because those who live like this, they will not inherit the kingdom of God. And brethren, don't take this as a joke. This was written to believers. Because there are many false preachers today. Some people are even saying what Paul thought. They are, they are not correct. Some people will tell you that adultery cannot send you to hell. We just read now. He says adultery, fornication. He says those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Please, if people don't inherit the kingdom of God, what will they inherit? What are they then going to inherit? You know, Jesus came to set us free from this thing. But he also came so that we might produce the nature of God. We might produce fruit of the Holy Spirit. So we have now seen works. But then in verse 22, look at what he now says. But the fruit of the Spirit, works of the flesh, fruit of the Spirit. He now began. His love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, Against such, there is no law. You understand what he's saying? Against such, there is no law. It means that because we are now under grace, you see, it is when people are sinning that or have sinful nature in them that you give them a law. Thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Why? So because they have their tendency in them, you give them a law. But people who are delivered from that and are now walking in the fruit of the Spirit, you cannot legislate and say, um, thou shalt be good, thou shalt be kind, thou shalt be loving. Do you know you can't legislate that? You know why? It is a fruit. You don't need to do a law that says a tree must produce fruit. There is no need for any law to make a tree produce fruit. You can't say thou shalt produce fruit. You can have a law that compels somebody to weed a tree, to prune a tree. But you cannot have a law to say the tree must be fruitful. Why? Because fruitfulness is a function of a seed. It's not a product of activity. Did you know that trees that produce fruit, they are just on one spot? <laughs> we don't produce fruit by activity. We don't produce fruit by laboring. We don't produce fruit by working. We produce fruit by abiding. That's why there is no law. <laughs> you can't, you can't, that's why we no longer live under the law. Because now the life of Jesus is being reproduced in us. So what law do you want to say? Do you want to say, thou shalt become like Jesus? We are not under the law anymore. So the fruit of the Spirit must flow out of our lives. If we are truly abiding in Jesus, and you can see long-suffering, meekness, love. What, is, what does it mean to love? To love simply means to, be, to treat Jesus the way Jesus would treat them. And that is not something you are struggling to do. It's something that comes to you naturally. Because why? Jesus is planted in you and is growing in you. So when you see a genuine believer, he will be loving. You see, there is no speaking in tongues here. <laughs> there is no miracle here. There is no money here. Did you see money as the fruit of the Spirit? No. That's not a proof. That's not a proof that the Holy Spirit is in you. He talks about joy. You know, people in the world today, they are looking for joy everywhere. People watch football for joy. Before the match comes, they are excited. They are happy. Oh, today's match. Then they play and their team loses. They go to bed sad. You see, those are temporary things. Oh, I want to have sex. And you are happy. And then after the sex, you say, what is all of this after all? You are gone. So in, in the world, they just have temporal happiness. Short, 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 short. But you see, joy as a fruit of the Holy Spirit is continuous. 
It does not, it's not affected by your circumstance. It is produced from the inside. It is produced by the Holy Spirit. We have peace. You can't be, you can't have the Holy Spirit in you and not be a peaceful person. You, will not, you are not going to like trouble. In fact, not just that you are going to be a peaceful person, you are going to be a peacemaker. You are not the kind of person that you will see them beating a woman, you will remove your phone and be recording it. No, you will intervene. You will want to ensure that there is peace between people. You are not going to be sowing the seed of discord. You are not somebody that you are going to offend your spouse and you are not going to say to it before you go to bed. A peaceful person. When people come to your life, there, there is going to be a... They will not be able to explain it. Because see, the, the peace of God is not something that we can explain. The, Jesus said, the peace that... Uh, Paul said, the peace that surpasses all understanding. You see, you, that surpasses all understanding. That means you can't reason it. People will see this peace in your life. Your life will be so peaceful. The things that worry people will not worry you. People are struggling to build house, to buy car, hey, to build career. Oh, where will they be in 10 years' time? Oh, my pension. Hey, my health. All of those things will not matter to you. Your life will be peaceful. You may not have anything materially speaking. You may even have, but your peace comes from the Lord. There is long suffering. Long suffering. What is long suffering? To simply suffer long. It's not that you are crazy. It is the Holy Spirit that is producing it in you. That's why you can endure. You can endure situation. You can endure your spouse. Long suffering. That means you have to endure your spouse for the rest of your life. You are ready. If you have to endure with people, you are ready. You can suffer long, even for the, for the name of Jesus. People are abusing you every day because you are preaching the gospel. You are ready to go through it. They lied against you. It's all, it's, it's, it's all good. You can suffer long. You are not going to compromise and say, enough is enough. God is not giving me a job. I'm going to compromise my body. Oh, I don't have a husband. I don't have a husband. I'm now 50 years old. I want to just go and get pregnant. You see, you are ready to suffer long. No matter how long it takes, you've been trusting God for something. You say, I will wait on the Lord. This is produced by the Holy Spirit in us. There is gentleness. Gentleness. There is an approach. You see, this thing is so beautiful. The way God wants our life to be. There is gentleness. You know, I'm amazed at Jesus, what he said to that woman that was caught in adultery. He said, go and see no more. People could relate with Jesus. They could put their head on him. He's so welcoming. He's not harsh. He's not rash. Do you know why? That's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came upon him, produced his fruit in Jesus. He's very gentle. Gentle to approach. Some of us are too quick and too, we get irritated easily. Gentleness, goodness, goodness. You see, this goodness is different from good. <laughs> you know, remember in Genesis, there was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Note, it is the tree of knowledge. It is knowledge of good. It is knowledge of good. It doesn't make the person good. It's not the nature of good. It is the knowledge of good and evil. That's not what we are talking about. So in the world, that's the one people know. They want to do good. That's not the one we are talking about. We are talking about goodness that comes from the fruit of the Spirit. In fact, people will say, this man, this woman, she, she's a very good woman. But you yourself, you don't even see it and you are not doing it, eff making effort to be good. It just comes to you as in, that is just the way you are. People will ask, how can you be treating your wife so wonderful like this? For you, you are not struggling to do it. You are not impressing anybody, but you couldn't do otherwise. You even don't know any other way to treat your wife other than to be good to your wife. You are good to people. And now we are not talking about goodness that is a product of work. The one which is from the fruit, uh, which is from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's not the one we are talking about. We are talking about of Jesus, the life of Christ. The Bible says he went about doing good. This, that's the goodness that is produced from the nature of God. You remember somebody came to Jesus and said, good master. He said, don't call me good. No one is good but the Lord. Because the concept of good, human concept or satanic concept of good, is different from that of God. As far as God is concerned, it is only the thing that comes from him that is good. Any other thing, even if it looks good, humanly speaking, but that does not come from the, from the Lord, is not goodness. He talks about faith. 
You see that faith is a, is a product of fruit of the Holy Spirit. You see, the more, the more you are abiding in the Spirit, the more you'll be growing in faith. Faith will, not, will be produced. That's why if, if you, are, uh, you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, you will eventually be growing in faith. Your faith will increase. Your faith will grow. It's a fruit. And it's, it's not going to be effort. So you can't boast about it. You can't say, how come these people can't believe me? I believe. No. You will just see that you, you just have faith. You just know that God is with you. And God is going to come true for you. Meekness. Meekness. See, meekness is a little bit different from humility. Humility goes along with humiliation. Readiness to bring yourself down. Readiness to suffer humiliation. That's humility. But meekness, meekness is restraint, restraining power to avenge, to defend yourself because you want to allow God to be the one to decide it. That's why Jesus said, learn of me, for I am meek and lowly at heart. So you see those three things, humility, lowliness, meekness. They look similar, but they are all different. Jesus is lowly. Lowliness is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. That means that if you, you are not somebody that you will pick high things. If they put uh, a big phone, expensive phone, and a small one, you are not dispensing that. The tendency in you is that you want to grab the one that is expensive. You prefer simple, simple things. You, don't, you are not high-minded, exactly. When you are lowly, that's why Jesus could sit on a donkey. There were chariots, but he preferred a donkey. You just discover that you would prefer to be the last than to be the first. That's lowliness. And the meekness, Jesus could command legions to destroy all the soldiers that wanted to kill him, but he restrained it. He restrained himself. And he had the power. Can you imagine? And he's saying we should be that way. You don't need to fight for yourself. You remember Joseph? He didn't defend the fact that they lied against him. Even when he came out of prison, he didn't try to clear his name. <laughs> It doesn't matter because God knows he didn't do it. So, And that's all that matters. There is temperance. Temperance. That means self-control. This self-control is not self-control of somebody who is not saved, who just determined, I'm not going to do something. No. This is you. This is the Holy Spirit giving you ability to put your body under control, to put your body under check so that you can do anything that the Lord requires of you. The Bible says, against such, there is no law. He now said, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with his affection and laws. That's Galatians 5.24. 25 says, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. If you dwell in the spirit, walk also in the spirit. Now, let me read to us uh, how to grow in this fruit. John chapter 15. Because some people may think, oh, they need to work hard. <laughs> it's not a matter of working hard. John chapter 15 verse 1 says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he shall take away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he shall purge it, he purge it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. Except we abide. So how do we become fruitful? By abiding in Jesus. Why are people not fruitful today? They don't know Jesus. The majority of messages on our pulpit, they are not about Jesus. They are not revealing Jesus to people. You can only be fruitful as you know Jesus, as you abide in Jesus, his word becomes your life. His word becomes everything you do. He becomes everything you live. Because that's the gospel. Jesus said, go and preach or go and teach everything whatsoever I've commanded you. So what's the gospel? Everything Jesus represents. His life, his teaching, his character. Everything. That is the gospel. The gospel is not come and accept Jesus Christ. That's just an entry point to the gospel. But the gospel is the message, the life, the message, and the kingdom of Jesus Christ. So it is by abiding in Jesus that we can be fruitful. When you abide in Christ, said, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, if you abide in me, 
Let me read John 15, 7. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. That's also the key to prayer. Abiding in Jesus. Many people are not abiding in Jesus, but they are running from mountain to mountain, from Shiloh to Shiloh, from camp to camp, seeking answer to their prayers. It's just pure foolishness. The way to answer prayer is to abide in Jesus. Anybody that is not preaching Jesus to you is wasting your life. Any preacher, any congregation where Jesus is not the focus, they are wasting your life. Anywhere you go and you don't know Jesus more, they are wasting your life. Any message you are hearing that does not lead you to closer work with Jesus, closer knowledge of Jesus, they are wasting your life. That's why you can't be fruitful for God. You can't. You can't produce fruit. You see, we produce for God by abiding in Jesus. It's not by running around. It's not by determination. I pray the Lord will give you uh, insight and more understanding of this in the name of Jesus. I pray that you will truly be fruitful in the name of Jesus. Please remember to pray also for us as we share the word of God that we also will be fruitful in our dealings, in our work with God in the name of Jesus. If you want to contact us, our contact details, they're in our about section or our profile or simply check the description below if you are watching this on our YouTube channel. My name once again is Olusha Gumukulu. God bless you.